Welcome on back to Sojourner Light, the channel where I share opinions that would be made into full edited commentary videos, but I decide against it because I'd rather just kind of speak what's on my mind and then get over it. So, Legends of Runeterra is probably one of my favorite games. I love the card game, I love just all of the different archetypes and characters and champions and everything that's in it because it allows for a widely creative set of play. But at the same time, there's also a really interesting competitive field to it. There's a lot of community-hosted tournaments, but most importantly are the Riot-hosted tournaments, because Riot actually hosts tournaments out of their own client, depending on how you perform on ladder. Now, I think that trying to determine term tournament players on a different format based on a, a ladder format that is not favorable to them uh, is possibly the the worst way that you can I don't know make it engage your players right so I'm playing best of three but uh, in best of three you're able to ban a deck you're able to see what cards your opponents have has in their deck before the match starts so you can get an understanding of what cards they might have tacked and what they're what they're playing for and all that right and this is entirely different from ladder ladder does not prepare you for best of three format instead it says hey just play the best deck and hope that you run into matchups that you're up against which i think is a really asinine way of making the best of three format accessible to people now i understand that having a best of three ladder would remove some of the casual aspect remove that idea that oh yeah i have 15 minutes to spare i'm gonna play a game of legends of runeterra and it doesn't really matter if i win or lose whereas if you're playing best of three you're kind of locked in for about an hour especially if your opponent's like playing slow and trying to make up the best format Plus, playing best of three on ladder uh, would be a problem for the average casual player because then they'd have to have three decks to play ranked and they'd have to have three decks that they think can work well together. And that's going to be a whole slew of issues and the reason why I think that Riot hasn't implemented a best of three yet. Point still is, though, that I find it really, really dumb that in order to qualify for the seasonals tournaments you're playing a format that doesn't prepare you for seasonals tournaments and that that's like one thing that i have a little bit of a, a gripe about i really think that there could be a better use of the gauntlet system that we have in play where you know every couple of weeks or whatever you're like hey uh top masters players plays in a best of three format uh, that then determines their placement in seasonals. And from there, you have all these mini tournaments that occur over a season's runtime that prepares these players for a competitive aspect and gives them more competitive gameplay time instead of trying to be like, man, am I going against... Well, this video is going to date itself, but am I going to go against Seraphine today? Or am I going to go against Vayne today? Or, you know, what other top meta deck am I going to be playing against in this game that I just I'll probably ban in a tournament anyway <laughs> you know it, it's not it, it doesn't make any sense but what also doesn't make any sense is how they've been handling their world's announcements so uh for myself I have a an interest in casting and spectating competitive sport uh sports and esports to an extent right uh i'm awash it with information in terms of rainbow six siege i love everything about the competitive rainbow six siege environment i've been trying to uh, get better at casting rainbow six siege for instance and one of the things about being a caster for rainbow six is that it really helps if your audience has a storyline uh, for you to refer back to it really helps if you can create these villain versus hero arcs uh, in conjunction with the competitive layout 
So you're like, oh yeah, um, W7M and Black Dragons both made it out of their group. This is for Rainbow Six. And so for that reason, we're probably going to see some Latem rivalry come through here. Black Dragons, you know, fourth place in their region didn't really do a whole lot to... They actually only qualified to the Copa Elite Six and eventually to this major at the end of November uh, by a difference of nine rounds. It, it, it wasn't that they won it off of points. They were tied on points with another team, Furia, in the Brazil series and uh, lost and, and won it off of round differential. That, that was the reason, that was how Black Dragons got into this. And so W7M will be familiar with them, but then in this larger competitive framing, how does W7M and Black Dragons stack up against each other? And that's something that, as an audience member even, I can talk about, where it's like, yeah, I think this is going to be really cool to see because of the history that we've seen in these mini tournaments or the history that we've seen of this player just on ladder or or anything. But instead... Riot refuses to push anything out. They refuse to share any information on the players, the dates that this world's tournaments, the best players from seasonals and ladder of the last year, all competing for in for like best player in the world, that title. There's no there's no announcement of the players aside from like one tweet that I could find where it's like, yeah, here's some of the player standings. All right, cool, moving on. There's no announcement of the date. In fact, I found out the date through a podcast that I listened to on Legends of Rune Terra. I didn't know the date that it was happening. Um, I didn't know how long it was gonna be going for. I don't know when it's starting. I and quite frankly, I don't know, even looking at the standings and finding that link for myself and having to go extremely out of my way to be like, oh, hey, yeah, here's the EU representatives. Here's the APAC representatives. There, there's no, there's nothing, there's none of that. And so when I have to go out of my way, I still don't know who a lot of these people are, even if a lot of them might be on social media or even better content creators and why I say it's even better to, for them to be content creators is because if Riot Games wants to highlight these players the players that have allowed themselves to be highlighted to be clipped are already putting themselves out there Legends of Runeterra also has accounts for different languages of their game or for the different nation representatives of their game right and that in and of itself should be you know a rallying point for all these different regions it should be hey here's some here's the english uh side of things here are some canadian and american players oh you're over on the eu side great here's like some players from germany here's some players from from these regions and when they're content creators you can then share clips of like hey here's like what they've been doing in in ranked lately or a preferred play style that we notice that they have like uh, I don't know if Ice T is in it, but you know, Sparkling Ice T, the commentator, content creator, all of the above, whatever you want to call him, he loves his Scar Grounds deck. And so maybe what if we see, you know, if Ice T was in Worlds, I haven't seen the roster in a while, so I can't remember if he is in or not, but Ice T, what if he, uh, what if he brings the Scar Grounds deck to? the world's tournament wouldn't that be interesting because then it's like oh yeah this is one of ice T's staples but because there's no recognition of these players nor any uh admittance to their to their um roster like the roster that they have of players that are going to this tournament there's no uh there's no indication or understanding of whom these players might be there's no understanding of the storylines that we could build as an audience to see where things could go and, and and speculations we could create on how players are going to shape up for myself because I don't speak Japanese and I don't speak Korean I don't speak Malay uh, I don't I don't speak a lot of 
Asian languages. In fact, the only Asian language that I'm at least passable at is Mandarin. And even then, like, I'm conversational in that. I'm not, I'm not fluent in the slightest. And I don't have a frame of reference for a lot of the players from these APAC regions because the times that the seasonal tournaments are streamed at are inconvenient for me, for APAC. So letting using the Le- Legends of Runeterra Twitter or, or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, I don't use TikTok or Instagram or Twitter even. I like, I'm just saying that from what I've seen and from what I've gone back on to look at, there's no indication that... Uh, there's no indication that Legends of Runeterra seems to even be aware of these players or what they've been playing for or preparing for. In fact, Jason Florent, who is a top-tier Canadian player who is in Worlds, and he didn't really know he was in Worlds <laughs> from what I've heard. Uh, but anyway, Jason Florent, he took four days off of work. And this is something that he said in one of his recent podcast episodes on Mastering Runeterra. He specifically said that he took four days off of work in order to prepare for Worlds. There is so much time and preparation going into these events by content creators that Legends of Runeterra is not even remotely mirroring with the uh, unbelievably, like, far far larger budget and, and time space, you know, than what the average person can can put out they don't have the connections they don't have the resources like i can't say like hey i'm a i'm an amateur caster um could i commentate over your games <laughs> I, I don't have that level of reach for these people who are at this level legends of runeterra riot games does they are the ones running the tournament they could say hey could we interview you hey could we do literally anything to garner interest in worlds and they're not doing it and then people are wondering like wow why why aren't people why why is uh legends of runeterra not uh as profitable as other riots other properties is because it, it often seems like they just do not care and that is so very frustrating anyway that's all i got to say about that Hope I made some sense, hope I didn't ramble on too long, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Safe travels, and goodbye.